Thank you very much. We have uh, the Lady Cats and the Van Lady Vandals tonight in a regional quarterfinal game from the brand new Lone Oak Buffaloes or Lone Oak Lady Buffaloes, I suppose, uh, softball field uh, just off of US 69 in Lone Oak, beautiful facility. Tony Flippin is with me uh, for the broadcast tonight. And uh, our other personnel include uh, Matt Jansen, our technical director, James Terry, our producer, Natalie Sheffield and Holly Dunn are handling uh, video and other uh, production duties for us here this evening. Lady Cats come into this game tonight 22 and 8 with a two tie uh, indication there on their record as well. The uh, Lady Vandals 33 and 3 and both teams went undefeated in district play. Both teams have won their first two uh, playoff series or in the case of Sulphur Springs they won their first uh, playoff series against Brownsboro and then had the uh, single playoff uh, victory in the area round against Quinlan Ford and uh, for Van they defeated Pittsburgh out of Sulphur Springs district 15-4A 6 to nothing and 15 to nothing and then they defeated Farmersville 5 to 1 lost 8 to 10 or 10 to 8 and then defeated Farmersville in the third game 8 to 5 to get here to the regional quarterfinal game. Tony Flippin, I think we have a very even matchup here tonight. When you start the third round, there's not any flukes left. Or, or very, It's very odd. So this should be a lot of talent on the field. Uh, should be some good pitching. We've got a lot of wind today, so we're going to test the defense. We were talking about how good a defense everybody's been playing, but we got some pop-ups and so forth tonight. It's go it could get interesting. Lady Cat Softball brought to you by BT Medical, Northeast Texas Farmers Co-op, Alliance Bank, J. Hodge Chevrolet, City National Bank, Farm Country, Hooten's Hardware, Wesley House, and the University Interscholastic League. We'll take a break, come back, and uh, we will have your starting lineups and the uh, start of tonight's ball game when Lady Cat Softball continues after this on KSST. Lady Cat Softball on KSST coming to you from Lone Oak tonight. And we will play on uh, artificial turf. This brand new facility, there's a uh, grandstand directly behind home plate and uh, risers down either side where fans can come in and bring their own chairs. And we're sitting on the Sulphur Springs side tonight and a uh, large crowd of Sulphur Springs folks sitting behind us in their lawn chairs and what have you and uh, same thing over on the opposite side with Van. So we have uh, something close to a uh, capacity uh, crowd here, very much like what we had at Commerce the other night. So from Lone Oak, here's our national anthem. Lady Cats are the home team tonight, and so they will be in the field, of course, first. And uh, starting on the mound for Sulphur Springs is Hannah Speed. 19 innings pitched in the playoffs, 29 strikeouts, two walks, three hit batters. She's given up nine hits, five runs, but only three earned runs, and her earned run average is 0.15 here in the playoffs. For Sulphur Springs, 
It'll be Emerson Thompson at second base leading off. Nicole Higgins at short, batting second. Hannah Speed batting third, the pitcher. Baylor Boatman, the third baseman, batting fourth. Batting fifth, the first baseman, Reese Reagan. Batting sixth in right field, Claire Thompson. Batting seventh, the designated player, Abby Goldsmith. Batting eighth in uh, left field, it'll be K.K. Montgomery. And batting ninth, Anahi Velasquez, the catcher for Sulphur Springs. For Van, leading off the second baseman, Emerson Swope. Batting second, Mahala McKinney, the third baseman. Avery Crouch, the shortstop, bats third. Malin Hale, the catcher, bats fourth. Jaylee Potter is the pitcher. She will bat fifth. Tatum Horton, the first baseman, bats sixth. Ava Hobson, the center fielder, bats seventh. Batting eighth, Nikki Thompson, the left fielder. Batting ninth, Lana Shearhart, the designated player. And in right field, and uh, she will not bat, Abigail Otter. By the way, in center field for the Lady Cats tonight and not in the batting order, Allison Frazier. So Lady Vandals batting first here as the visiting team. They are in uh, red jerseys, red pants here tonight with Vandals in white block letters across the front. Lady Cats are in their black home uniforms with pinstripes, blue leggings, and the first pitch is swung on and missed by Emerson Swope. Third baseman Baylor Boatman way in. She's halfway down the line, Tony. Well, it's a lot of left-handers with those little running slaps. So first one was a swing. Same thing there. So she didn't show it, but uh, you got to pretend. Swope is a okay. left-handed batter. There has I haven't seen near as much of the run-up and slap. A few years back, that's all you saw. Uh -huh. uh, it's more sit back and swing the swing the bat this year. So a little more rare. Baylor backed up, bag deep at third now with two strikes. And a speed. Pitch way up high for ball one as uh, Anahi Velasquez had to leap up out of her crouch there to uh, bring that one down. One and two the count. A lot of wind out here tonight. You'll hear that on our broadcast, but there is a lot for these ladies to work on. One, two pitch. Call strike three. No, he called it outside. Oh, I saw her walk yeah. into the dugout. No, that's the thing. I, we've had a couple of umpires that used the left hand, but I think he signaled outside there. So two and two the count. Two, two pitch. There's swing and a miss for strike three. No doubt about that one. No doubt about it. And somewhat what we've come to come to understand from Hannah Speed, it's a, it's a rarity that she doesn't have at least one strikeout an inning. So it's a good way to start the game. Again, 29 strikeouts in 19 innings pitched so far. Once again now to face Mahala McKinney. We have Baylor Boatman, the third baseman, almost halfway down the line. First pitch is a fastball swung on and missed for strike one. She was trying to drive that one past Baylor. She was hanging in on it and trying to throw it down that third baseline with Baylor coming in. Another left-handed batter. She stands about midway in the batter's box. Upright stance. And the pitch by Speed swung on and missed. Strike two. 0-2. The count to Mahala McKinney. Van batting in the top of the first inning. No score, one out, nobody on base. Infield's playing a little closer than a lot of people do, but that's we're so good we can get to it. And a swing and a miss for strike three, so she has struck out the first two Van Lady Vandals swinging. Keep that up, we don't have to play defense. So that's something that we have to deal with because there's a lot of time goes by in a normal Lady Cat game where the defense is not involved, and you've got to be involved on every pitch. Avery Crouch, the shortstop, steps in with two out and nobody on base. She's the first right-handed batter that Hannah Speed has faced tonight. Speed into the windup, and the pitch is fouled back into the net for strike one. Malin Hale, the catcher on deck. She's throwing lots of strikes to start this ball game out. Hannah Speed, a freshman as Tony 
has pointed out more than once. She she's, has a full season of experience behind her now. Pitch. This one is hit foul to the left side in front of us and uh, lands in front of the screen. And the count goes to 0-2. There's a decent amount of foul ter foul territory, but unless it gets pretty high, it's going to be hard to, uh, <laughs> yeah. to for the players to get to it from third or catcher. So there's a lot of balls that might fall in in the foul territory. It's a good running field, too, if the ball gets passed. Mm -hmm. There'll be a lot of bases stolen. Two outs, nobody on, 0-2 count. Pitches high up around the shoulders. And the count goes to one and two to Avery Crouch. Outfield is pretty close in. They're, they're medium depth because with this wind coming in, it's, it's fighting them. They're trying to keep a ball from, from uh, falling in. The flag is behind us. Here's the pitch. Way up high mercy. The flag is between the softball field and the baseball field, and so the flag is behind us. And, uh, I didn't realize that until the anthem. But the wind, then, is blowing in. I think it's kind of coming this direction right here. I don't know exactly. It may be, like, from the southeast. But it's got a pretty good pace to it. 2-2. Two -two. Yeah. Well, not in this on a fastball about the waist. And so Hannah Speed strikes out the side, all swinging at the top of the first inning. No runs, no hits. And obviously no errors. And we go to the bottom of the first. Van, nothing. Sulphur Springs coming to bat. This is Lady Cat Softball on KSST. Lady Cat Softball on KSST. Bottom of the first inning from Lone Oak. Emerson Thompson, the second baseman. Nicole Higgins, the shortstop. And Hannah Speed, the pitcher. First three batters for Sulphur Springs to face Jaylee Potter for the Van Lady Vandals. Hannah Speed struck out the side in the top of the first inning. And nobody really, uh, Tony, even uh, hit a loud foul. Off no, of they, they were searching. And that's the three batters that you want to bring, that you get an opportunity to say what your order is. So that speaks well of how she's pitching so far. So she's got good thoughts going into the next inning. And now we'll see what Jaylee Potter has to offer for Van. She's a right-handed pitcher. She looked good warming up. Looked pretty well, a, a close equal to Hannah. And Emerson Thompson, the second baseman, leading it off for Sulphur Springs. There's a good-looking fastball inside for ball one. Emerson Thompson in the playoffs is four for 12 with two doubles and four RBIs. Two runs scored. Great speed. Pitch. Swung on and missed. Took something off of that one. Yeah, this is our normal lineup, and we've got a track team, first two batters. They're fun to watch, especially on turf. They can move. Emerson stands uh, somewhat toward the front of the batter's box, a wide stance, and the pitch is high for a ball. And it is two and one to Emerson Thompson. Nicole Higgins on deck. As Tony told you, both of them have tremendous speed on the base pass. Jaylee Potter into the wind, fastball just above the belt, uh, that swung out and missed for strike two. Two and two the count. Emerson Thompson leading it off in the bottom of the first inning. Van did not score in the top of the first as Hannah Speed struck out the side. There's a pitch down below the knees for ball three and full count here. Three and two to Emerson Thompson. Lady Cats with six straight district championships. Last year they went 31 and seven, finished number six in the state. They beat Van in the playoffs last year in two games. There's a swing and a miss for strike three. So the first four batters in the game have struck out. With that Hannah Speed struck out the side for Sulphur Springs, and now Jaylee Potter has struck out the first batter for Sulphur Springs, Emerson Thompson. All and, swinging. And pitching is what gets you in the playoffs, keeps you going. Both these teams obviously have some. Nicole Higgins, shortstop for Sulphur Springs and a right-handed batter. Takes a pitch high for ball one. Home plate umpire checking with the first base, first base umpire on that call. 
And the pitch is down for ball two. The Lady Vandal outfield is probably five or six steps deeper in each position than the Lady Cats, so there's a lot of room for a ball to drop in. I think that's probably they'll learn to come in. 2-0 pitch is above the shoulders for ball three, so 3-0 three and oh now to Nicole Higgins. Higgins 5 for 12 in the playoffs with a home run, four RBI, and three runs scored. Way ahead in the count here. 3 0 pitch is down below the knees for ball four. So, base on balls allowed by Jay Lee Potter. And we have the first base runner of the game, Nicole Higgins, at, uh, at first base. And now Hannah Speed, the pitcher, stepping up for Sulphur Springs. So, we'll see whether or not we're going to try to impose our speed on this and force Van to, uh, to throw the ball around. We'll set that van defense for you here in just a minute. Hannah Speed stands right at the front of the batter's box. And there's a call strike one and a throw down to first base and diving back in to Cole Higgins. And throw just, bounced in. Yeah, just that right there. They've got a chance to get the ball away, have the ball thrown away. So with our speed, I, I think that's what we should be doing is testing the waters a little bit. Pitch is low for a ball, and it's one and one. Now, I notice that uh, Hannah has stepped back maybe uh, half a step from the front of the batter's box after that first pitch. Yep. And Potter's got good speed. One one pitch, swung on and missed, fastball, and it is one and two. We are positioned about halfway down the third baseline just to the right of the Sulphur Springs dugout. Now speed back to the front of the batter's box here on one and two. Runner at first, one out, and she fouls it into the net to the third base side, and the count remains at one and two. She took a good swing, was right on it. And Nicole Higgins is bothering the catcher. Every every pitch, she's, she's going over there looking at her, wanting to throw, so that's what speed does. Higgins at first base with the walk, one out. And the pitch. Down for a ball. And it is two and two to Hannah Speed. She is one for nine batting in the playoffs, but that was an inside the park home run against Brownsboro. And two runs score. Two two pitch from Potter is high for a ball up around the shoulders and she goes to three and two on Hannah Speed. So she's gone to three balls on every batter so far, Tony. She's up and down a little bit. Uh, whether or not she's trying to get us to, to bite, don't know. She may just not have her stroke down yet to get in the zone. Jaylee Potter, the pitcher for Van. The foul, not a foul, but a pop up to the right side. And it is caught by the second baseman, Emerson Swope, for the second out. First thought that was going to be foul to the uh, right side, but it stayed in play, and the second baseman Swope makes the play for out number two. And now Baylor Boatman, the Lady Cat third baseman, steps up with a runner at first and two out. I thought that was a little bit deeper and was going to be a little more adventure for the second baseman. First pitch, hit on the ground, two hops to second base, and there's the third putout as Emerson Swope comes up with it over to Tatum Horton for the putout. So Lady Cats do not score. They got a runner on first base, Nicole Higgins, but she could get no farther than first base. And we go to the top of the second. It's Lady Cats nothing and Van nothing, and this is Lady Cats softball on KSST. Lady Cat Softball on KSST brought to you by BT Medical, Northeast Texas Farmers Co-op, Alliance Bank, J. Hodge Chevrolet, City National Bank, Farm Country, Hooten's Hardware, Wesley House, and the University Interscholastic League. Please say thank you to all those fine sponsors of Lady Cat Softball and all Sulphur Springs High School Sports on KSST. Well, Tony Flippin, uh, James Terry informs us that we might be having a, a National Weather Service announcement uh, any time here. We, uh, we are told that we are under a tornado watch this evening until I think it was 10.30 uh, p.m. 
Yeah, I but, think uh, it was. I'm sorry. Just going to say the weather right now is uh, a little hazy, but otherwise uh, just fine. Kind of kind of warm and humid, but the strong wind is the main thing coming in out of the south. That's the thing with the wind. It may be pulling it to us, but hopefully it'll hold off till after this game. Everybody can get safely home. Forecast I saw predicted, uh, I think it was a 60% chance of thunderstorms tonight, but that was after 10 p.m. That was af- as of about mid-afternoon. First pitch is fouled to the left side over our heads. So this is Malin Hale, the catcher, so it's 0-1 to Malin Hale against Hannah Speed, the freshman right-hander for the Lady Cats. Malin Hale, the cleanup hitter for the Lady Vandals. She fouls this one, just got a piece of it. It goes foul off to the uh, third base side, and it's 0-2. That's one thing about throwing a lot of strikes. The ladies will get in there, and they know they're going to cut at it. So Hannah's got to have some movement, pick her spots. But so far, she's a whole lot more in the zone than Potter was. But sometimes that's good, sometimes it's bad. Defense is going to play a major role in this ball game because it's obvious we've got two good pitchers. Lady Cats have only committed one error in the three playoff games so far. And a speed. Pitching, and this one's hit to the left side, and the shortstop for Sulphur Springs, Nicole Higgins, back out on the outfield grass, so to speak, about five or six steps and makes the catch. That's the first ball put in play by Van tonight. Yep. The wind kind of held it up. They hit that one right into the teeth of it. It wasn't hit hard. It held up, and Nicole's got a lot of range, and she made an easy play out of it. So one out, nobody on top of the second. No score here. Sulphur Springs and Van. In this quarterfinal regional playoff game, now it is Jaylee Potter, the pitcher, number five hitter in the batting order for the Lady Vandal. She is a right-handed batter, and the pitch from Hannah Speed is up around the shoulders for ball one. Our defense is just like it was in the first, about medium depth. They're going to try to keep something from knocking, uh, dropping in. They're going to make you knock it over their head. Pitch by Hannah Speed. They swung on and missed. Strike one. One and one to Jaylee Potter, the Vandals pitcher. She gets deep in the box. There's a lot of girls get right up there at the front. And she gets back in the back. Crouching stance, at least the uh, bends that left knee. This pitch comes in low for ball two, and it is two and one to Jaylee Potter, Tatum Horton, the first baseman on deck for the Vandals. She tried to throw a little change up, and I was just fixing to say that she might be a little susceptible the way she's getting her timing. 2-1 pitch. This one hit well to left field, and moving to her left is K.K. Montgomery, and she makes the catch about chest high. Nice running catch there by K.K. Montgomery, and that ball was hit well. It was hit well, and but they still came in a little bit. That shows, and if we hadn't been play, if we'd been playing the depth that Lone Oak is, that would drop. So I think that's a good situation for the Lady Cats. They're saying right now, you're going to have to hit it over our heads before we back up, and that was a pretty decent test there. KK did a great job of concentrating. Two out, nobody on. Tatum Horton, the first baseman, a right-handed batter, standing back near the back of the box. First pitch in there for strike one to Tatum Horton. Van has not had a base runner as yet. Hannah Speed pitched a perfect game, though only five innings worth versus Brownsboro in the second game of uh, that series. And there's a fastball must be in for ball one. Again, we're on the third base side at ground level. I can't, I can't be as critical of the inside-outside tonight. <laughs> Sitting more or less behind a right-handed batter. Pitch by speed. Fast ball, swung out and miss. Strike two. And it is one and two to Tatum Horton. Two out and nobody on, no score in the game. Top of the second inning from Lone Oak tonight. Speed with her foot on the rubber. And the pitch swung on and missed. There's her fourth strikeout of the night. And she has not allowed a base runner 
through the first two innings. So Van does not score. We go to the bottom of the second inning and no score between Van and Sulphur Springs. This is Lady Cat Softball on KSST. Lady Cat Softball on KSST. No scores. We go to the bottom of the second inning from Lone Oak. It'll be Reese Reagan, the first baseman, Claire Thompson, the right fielder, and Abby Goldsmith, the designated player for Sulphur Springs, to face Jay Lee Potter, the right-handed pitcher for Van. Reese Reagan in the playoffs, three for six with two home runs, both of those against Brownsboro. Four RBIs and five runs scored, right-handed batter, and the first pitch is low for ball one. This right here is power on power. Fun to watch. Yeah. Reese is a senior, stands about midway in the box, powerfully built. Potter with the pitch, and it is low for ball two, and she's been behind in the count a good bit, mm -hmm. a good bit here early in the game. Yeah, she hasn't got her up down going yet, and near like Hannah does. Reagan walked three times against Quinlan Ford, but two of those, Tony, were intentional walks. Yes, there's, that's a This ball hit. is hit to the right side, and it is in there, just inside the right field line, and she will hold at first with a single. Reese Reagan going the opposite way there. Haven't Did seen a, a lot of that from her. No, but, but with the speed of these pitchers, you're going to see some swinging behind. That one was clearly going to drop, but she didn't get a good enough jump and didn't force it since she's leading off. You don't want to get the leadoff runner thrown out trying to stretch the two. Abigail Otten, the right fielder, did a good job of getting over there and cutting that off because I was thinking double when it was uh, headed out that way. Yep, that was me first right all the way, I thought, too. First pitch low ball to Claire Thompson, the Lady Cat right fielder. So Reese Reagan with the first base hit of the ball game. At first base, first baseman and third baseman for Van, both in a couple of steps from the bag. Here's a pitch low for ball two to Claire Thompson. She's squaring to bunt each time, and, and uh, Van, the Lady Vandals are charging at both corners. Second baseman going over to try and, and hold Reese from getting too big of a, uh, of a lead. Let's see if she does it again. Jay Lee Potter, 2-0 pitch. Misses low and outside for ball three, so three and oh the count here. That's a real good job by Claire to go ahead and take those, and if you're giving yourself up, a lot of times you'll go out of the zone. That's a good job because it's clearly affecting Potter, so now you got an opportunity to get two on, no out. Potter has not thrown a strike yet this inning and the pitch. Still hasn't. It's high for ball four. So the first two batters on for Sulphur Springs here in the bottom of the second. That's a great job of hitting for Claire because when you get that bunt sign, you're saying you're giving yourself up, but she still made the pitcher throw a strike mm -hmm. and never came about. So that's a great job. It's the third walk of the playoffs for Claire Thompson. And now Abby Goldsmith, left-handed batter and the designated player, steps up with runners at first and second and nobody out bottom of the second. No score, pitch, and she shows bunt. And uh, she gets it down, but it is foul down the third base line. Third baseman uh, Mahala McKinney came charging in, made the play, but it was about six inches outside the line. That's one thing I've noticed about these turf fields. You've got to get the bunt down without the spin. If you've got English on it, it's going foul. 0-1 pitch, and that's a call strike at the knees to Abby Goldsmith. So it's 0-2 to Goldsmith. Reese Reagan at second, Claire Thompson at first. Nobody out, no score. Bottom of the second inning. 0-2 pitch to Abby Goldsmith. Outside, uh, just, just missed away. And it is one and two. Goldsmith. One for six with four walks in the three playoff games. Yeah, she's been getting on. The left-handed batter stands about midway in the box. 1-2 pitch. Swung on, popped up. And it is a out of play foul down the third baseline. Kind of hard to pick up the ball from this position, Tony. At least it is for me. Well, with the chain link here instead of netting, it's kind of yeah. we're kind of at a disadvantage. Mm -hmm. We've been fortunate enough to be where we've got some netting. We may have to change that. We're gonna tomorrow. we're gonna we're gonna move ten feet down uh, tomorrow evening. 
if we get here early enough. Pitch is down for a ball. Tried a change up there and couldn't hit with it. So Potter's struggling trying to find the zone. Lady Cats are showing good discipline. This is a big at bat for, for uh, Abby. If she can either force a walk or get a hit here, that's huge. 2-2 two -two pitch. Swung on and fouled out of play. Behind the uh, plate. She was right on that. That was a good swing. Count holds at 2-2. Two and two. Wasn't defensive at all. She had a reason she swung the bat that time. Reagan single the opposite way just inside the line. She's at second base. Claire Thompson drew a, a walk. And there's a ball low. And she's gone to 3-2 and two now to Abby Goldsmith. And in danger of walking, the bases loaded here. She's throwing lots of pitches. She's not struggling. She's just not, and to the umpire's credit, he's not calling it down. 3-2 pitch. Swung on and missed. Looked like a breaking ball of some kind. As uh, Abby Goldsmith a little bit fooled. Might have been a changeup. Uh, that's the first out of the bottom of the second inning. Yeah. She swung at ball four. That one was down. So she had shown good discipline, but just kind of went at that one a little too much. K.K. Montgomery, the hitter now, with runners at first and second and one out. And this pitch bounces in or skims the uh, artificial turf just as it crosses the plate for ball one. Want to know to K.K. Montgomery. Montgomery, five for 10. 500 batting average in the playoffs with a double and two triples. And she hits this oh, one yeah. past the third baseman into left field. And well, the uh, Lady Cats, oh no, runner is caught between home and third base and she will be tagged out. Some indecision there by Reese Reagan as the base hit by K.K. Montgomery to left field. It was to short left field. Nikki Hobson, the left fielder, came up throwing to the third baseman, Mahala McKinney, and uh, Reese Reagan caught between the bases there. Well, that was just a bad call. Coach Carrillo, he tried to, he, he waited too long, and he got her in no man's land. That should, he should have held because that ball was hit hard. And yeah. Ray, Ray, Reese was not going to outrun that one to the plate. We should have had the bases loaded and one out, but we don't. So now we see if, I, if Anna He can get a hit. Runners at second and third. Claire Thompson went to third, and KK Montgomery moved up to second base on the throw. Now with two out, runners at second and third. And here's a pitch high. And now it's one and one to Anna He Velasquez, the catcher. Good job of laying off of that when she was wanting it. Who'd you have with the put out on uh, Reese Reagan? That went uh, seven to five to two. Okay. Seven, five, two. Pitch to Velasquez. Around the knees for a ball. Two and one the count. Number nine hitter in the batting order for Sulphur Springs. She is the catcher. Runners at second and third and two out. No score, bottom of the second inning. And we need to get her on base and get the top of the order up with either bases loaded or a run already in. This is big. Two one pitch. That's a fastball just above the knee. Swung on and missed for strike two. That may be the best swing I've seen Anna He take, though. That one, she took a good aggressive swing. Two-two count, two outs, two runners on. No score. Bottom of the second. Jaylee Potter with the pitch. There's a call strike three. That's the first low when he's called. Pitch at the knees. And hard to say from our uh, vantage point if that was on the outside edge or, or caught more of the middle of the plate. But uh, relatively low there. And it's strike three. And the Lady Cats leave two on at second and third. And we go to the top of the third inning. It is no score. Sulphur Springs and Van from Lone Oak. This is Lady Cat Softball on KSST. Lady Cat Softball on KSST. And we're going to the top of the third inning with no score between Sulphur Springs and Van. And with the uh, third inning of play-by-play, -play, here's Tony Flippin. All right, we got a pitcher's duel going on right here. We've got two good pitchers, which is what you'll expect in round three of these playoffs. And uh, we're going to see who cracks. 
And right now, I got my money on Hannah Speed being able to withstand it and our defense to be ready, too. We uh, put the ball in play in the bottom of the second, or, or uh, yeah, in the bottom of the second, and uh, we kind of gave them an out. So we, we should have a little bit of confidence moving up here. Now, Hannah needs to go ahead and mow them down right here this, this half. Going to start off with Ava Hobson, the center fielder, leading off. Nikki Thompson, the left fielder, coming up next. And Lana Shearhart, the designated player, is third. So this is the bottom third of the order. Hannah Speed has been much more dominating so far than her uh, counterpart, Jaylee Potter. Yes. I mean, the effect has been the same, no score. But Lady Cats put up a real strong threat there in the bottom of the second and uh, came away with nothing. Yeah. Uh, Hannah hasn't been up and down near like Potter has. She's been in that zone. Here's the first pitch. Swing on, uh, swung on and missed. 0-1 pitch. Hannah looks very determined. Bowman starting off about a third down the line. So she's still protecting, but she can handle a shot down there too. The batter, square, batter squares and pulls it back a little bit up. One and one. A lot of these girls that have a little speed will start off with their at bat while the pitcher is, is making her, her uh, wind up. They'll square up, and then if they're not going to hit, they'll back up right quick. They're trying to draw the defense in and then hit it past them. Mm -hmm. Here comes the 1 1 pitch, and that one's up. 2 and 1. I've been talking about Hannah being more in the shoulders to the knees, but she kind of lost that one, but she went to the rosin bag. Getting the call from the dugout on the pitch. Defense hears it, so they know what they're going to do. She's on the rubber there and brings it. Another swing and a miss. Another good pitch. A little bit down. That's good. Keep it down in there right around those knees. So we got a 2-2 count. Lead off hitter, bottom of the third, scoreless game from a real nice Lone Oak Park here. Looks like Boatman's going to stay back now with two yep. strikes. With two, she'll stay about the bag, but some of them will still try it. And there's one at the letters and swung on his miss for the first out, so Hannah came came up to the top there and they swung under it. She does an outstanding job of throwing the ball let her high and getting people to swing under them. It's five strikeouts now for Hannah Speed. Yep. So now we got Nikki Thompson, the left fielder, coming up. She starts out and back in the box. She's going to give Hannah's pitch a little time to get to her. She kind of froze on that one, and it's a called strike one. Good pitch to start this batter off with. Number eight hitter in the order. Hannah's going to the rosin pretty well every pitch. It's kind of muggy out here. Here comes the next pitch. Fouled off. She was way late on that. So now Hannah's in total control with this one at 0-2. So she's got lots of options. She can throw the fast one up and away, up or in, or she can come in with change up, do what she wants to. She's got plenty of pitches left. That's a very defensive swing there by yes. Nikki Tompkins. Yeah, it was late. Uh, right now... You know, she may knock it out of the park here, but right now my, my dollar's on Hannah. Got the pitch coming. Here it is. A little bit up there, but had one to waste. One and two. Our defense is staying just like it is, medium depth, and I like that, uh, that strategy there. And our second and short, a lot of people get back on the edge of where it would be the grass. We play up. We cut off that infield hit. Here comes the next pitch, another defensive swing, and it barely got a, point, a, a piece of it to hang. I, that was almost in Anahee's glove when she swung. This Van team has played some teams that Sulphur Springs has played against, either in uh, district play or in uh, the playoffs. They beat North Lamar, Van did, six to nothing. Beat Brownsboro, five to nothing. There's the next pitch, and just barely foul about a foot. We'd like to have that one go left a little bit because Reese Reagan was right on top of the bag. That would have been an easy out. But she lives to find another pitch. So Nikki Thompson, the left fielder, is going to come in. Still got a one, in, or a one and two count. One out, nobody on. Here comes the next pitch. 
up or in, ball two. Look good from the side, but we can't tell the ins and outs from here. And so far, what I've seen, this umpire's uh, got a decent z uh, strike zone. I've only seen one strikeout from a ball that I thought was a little low. Mm -hmm. He's been uh, very consistent. So here comes the 2-2 pitch. There's a the ball hit the center field, and Frazier's camped under it. That, that ended up not being 20 feet beyond the grass, but that medium depth that they started made it a right. very easy play. So that's an F8 for the second out of the inning. And that's I really like that uh, that we're looking at the conditions and putting our uh, putting our fielders accordingly. So now we come up with Lana Shearhart. She's the number nine hitter in the uh, lineup. She's a designated player. She's batting for Abigail Ott in the right fielder. First pitch is a little bit up. One and zero. Oh. As of right now, Hannah Speed has faced the minimum number of batters yes. for Van. Yes, and she does that a lot. I mean, when you get, when we get deeper in a game, we we do so much, or I do so much yapping, I forget how good she's doing. There's the next pitch, and he he wanted to bring that arm up, but he didn't. So that's a 2-0 pitch. I think that's the first time she's gone to 2-0 on a batter. I believe that's the case. She hadn't thrown very many that weren't either called or swung at doing a really good job she's on the rubber here comes the wind up and there's the next one and that one was hit foul we got a blind spot but they, she got around on it but knocked it foul so now we got a 2-1 count if a ball is hitting to the left field corner here we're going to have to climb the fence tony to <laughs> see what's going on uh, you're out of luck my climbing days are over <laughs> i'm gonna i'm gonna sit here and wait on a report <laughs> Here comes the 2-2 pitch, and there he swung on, barely got a piece of it. She kind of helped Hannah out. That one was a little low. I said that was a 2-2. Now we got a 2-2. Nobody on. Chance for the Lady Cats to go three up, three down, three straight innings, and we're going to have the uh, top of the batting order coming up in the bottom half That's of right. this. So after the activity last, last half inning, we are looking at it. Hanging with another foul there, so Shearheart's doing a good job of making Hannah throw, but Hannah keeps throwing strikes, and that's fine. Lady Cats played Van in the playoffs last season and uh, beat Van two to nothing and nine to one in that best of three series. Here comes the next pitch, just barely high. He looked at it long and hard, so now. I think this is the first time Hannah's gone full to, on any batter. So it's a big pitch. We don't want to let uh, Lone Oak or uh, Van get any any uh, offense going because this will be this is being the number nine hitter going to let the, in the uh, lineup roll over. There's a high strike swinging. So Hannah took care of it. And once again, three up, three down, two strikeouts for the inning. And so we go to the bottom of the third inning here. No runs, no hits, no error. We got no score from Lone Oak Field. And hey, Lady Cat softball on KSST continues after this. Lady Cat softball on KSST. I'm John Mark Dempsey along with Tony Flippin. Matt Jansen is our technical director. James Terry, our producer. Natalie Sheffield and Holly Dunn are handling uh, video and other uh, technical duties and uh, we have come to the bottom of the third inning now with no score and here's Tony Flippin. All right we got the top of the order coming up Emerson Thompson the second baseman here comes Potter's first pitch and is right down the pipe for a strike. This is a good opportunity we made uh, Van play with the ball a little bit in the last inning and nearly came across with some runs. This is going to be a ball game of few runs, so we've got to capitalize. Here comes the 0-1 pitch, and wow. just a bit high, <laughs> as they say in Major League, as it went all the way to the screen. But we also have, uh, I'm, I'm grateful we're in Lone Oak because we have a rules committee here tonight. I've got one of my old refereeing buddies sitting behind, and I told him <laughs> if we have a rules 
question. He's coming up. Great. Next pitch is swung on and missed 0-2. Oh Mr. Danny Bowman is familiar with oh, yes. a whole lot of people in the KSST listening area. He's I did softball with him, football for years and years, and the young man has also been in at least one or two College World Series, so he knows his stuff. Wow. He's a Big 12 and a Southeast Conference. There's the next pitch, and it's low and bounced, and it got the bare hand of the catcher. So everybody's coming to see what's going on there. So we're going to take time out a minute and hope that young lady is okay. Your that's eyes uh, are good if you picked up that that's the particular thing that happened. Yeah, from yeah it, I could see it go down, and she was she stayed right there, and she reached out with that bare hand. you got to be tough to be a catcher. That's, that's a cliche, but there's, it's also very true. Absolutely. So now everybody's kind of taking a breath. And, the stands are quiet. Everybody's concerned about the health of the young lady, and we all should be. This is a wonderful sport, but you absolutely hate it when anybody gets any sort of injury. Anybody that uh, thinks softball is soft is, <laughs> has not been hit by a softball. Not one bit. Yeah. Not one bit. This The crowd is comparable here tonight uh, in size to the one at Commerce the other night, but that crowd at Commerce was a lot rowdier they than this hadn't crowd. Had a, they hadn't had near as many cups of Red Bull as the one in Commerce because <laughs> those folks came to party. That was the most fun we've had all all year. Of course, you got a single game, so it's like a game seven and right. so forth, and winner take all. We had uh, it was just fun to be there. So this is taking a little bit, so it's not just a look at it they're trying to see of course and the bad thing is that's the catcher's throwing hand so she's mm. a, she's a weapon back there so if she stays and that hand's iffy then there's a, you, you don't want to pick on things but that's where it gives an advantage for a running team like the lady cats these teams don't have a lot of depth no of course and i think that uh, looks like uh, van has uh, three extra players not counting uh, the Right fielder Otten, who uh, is in the field but does not bat. Yep. Now and she's she's getting up, and I think she's going to stay in the game. Looks like they'll let her take a few pitches and probably let her make a couple of throws to second, see if she can can grip and throw. So I mean, these ladies are tough, but it's that time of year. That's what they want to do. Malin Hale is the catcher for Van. She's gingerly uh, playing catch right yeah. now with the pitcher Jaylee Potter. And that's the thing. They may not have another catcher that's experienced. So they're going to do everything they can. But this is uh, this is just a bad situation for them. I hope she can stay in and maybe she can get the feeling back in and and work it out. We want both these teams at full strength and see who can, who's better. She's just playing straight catch with the pitcher right now, and she says she's ready to go. Now she convinced the coaches to leave her there. Looks like they're going to, so good deal for there. The fans gave her a big round of applause, and that's what we want to do. We want to see everybody get around healthy. So as it comes back, we're going to come into play with a 2-2 count on the leadoff hitter of the inning and our leadoff hitter, Emerson Thompson. So everybody's back. Potter's getting the sign from the dugout. Hale's ready for the pitch. Here comes the wind up in the 2-2. There's a shot right back to Potter and she snagged it. She couldn't help but. That is a great job by both the hitter and the pitcher. That was defensive and reaction and you feel bad, but that's a, that's a great play. That's why, to, that's why the pitchers wear those masks, Absolutely. Tony. Absolutely. That one came back there. So that's going to bring up Nicole Higgins, number two hitter and shortstop. Lady catcher putting the bat on the ball a little. Big swing and a miss there. She was a little bit behind that. But as far as the teams themselves right now, the Lady Cats are putting the ball in play a little bit, or uh, quite a bit more than the Lady Vandals. So hopefully that, that trend will stay. Here comes the 0-1 pitch, and there's a shot to left field. Left fielder's back, and she gets under it and has an out for the second out. So that's where Nicole hit that one pretty good. And them being back helped. So that was an F9 for the second out. And that brings up Hannah Speed. 
sky's gotten a little darker here just in the last uh, few minutes, Tony. We understand there's a thunderstorm moving from Collin County into the northern part of Hunt County. Of course, we're in far southern Hunt County, but... Yep. Uh, Hopefully it'll stay away from us and not, especially not bring any lightning where we have any delays. Here comes Hannah Speed, number three hitter, two outs, nobody on. Potter's first pitch, a ground ball to the second baseman, gets a candy hop, and they throw it out four to three. So that's a quick inning for Potter, and that also gives Hale a little bit of time to go rest her hand. So three up, three down in the bottom of the third, and we go to the top of the fourth. No score, really tight regional quarterfinal game between the Lady Vandals and the Lady Cats. And this is Lady Cats softball on KSST. No score as we go to the top of the fourth inning. Lady Cats and the Van Lady Vandals from Lone Oak tonight. I heard a horn there for a moment, Tony, and I was uh, afraid that that might be some kind of signal uh, having to do with lightning, but apparently not. There's been no announcement to, uh, to follow it, but uh, we do run the risk of some uh, severe weather in the area before the night is over, but uh, so far it's stayed away from us, but uh, we understand that it's, it's not all that far away and uh, could be coming our direction uh, before the night is over. We'll, uh, we'll keep a good thought. It's but as we say, top of the fourth, here's Tony Flippin. Sure, not a big old sunshiny field right now, but everybody's doing okay, and we hope that goes. Quick moving ball game, too, that we haven't played an hour, and we've already started the fourth inning. So, like I said, pitching duel. We start out with the top of the order for the Lady Vandals. Emerson Swope, the second baseman, then by Mahala McKinney, the third baseman, and Avery Crouch, the shortstop. One, two, three hitters for the Lady Vandals. They went down in order, all striking out when Hannah talked to them last time. So we'll see what she's got to say this time. Left-handed hitter, which means Baylor Bowman is about almost halfway when she starts, and she'll go to creeping in. She's got that mask on in case they slap at it, too. But Baylor can handle it. Emerson, or, uh, Hannah takes the first pitch just a little bit down. No sign of a, of a bunt from Swope that time. I think we wasn't it the first two are left-handers. That's right. If I remember correctly. That's correct. So that, that's got the potential to put pressure. Foul ball out over us. Neither of those pitches has she attempted to do anything other than just swing the bat. So Baylor's back maybe a step or two. One and one. Hannah still looks in complete control as she showed no signs of anything but throwing the good strikes and she's keeping them off balance. Not a whole lot of balls put in play for the Lady Vandals to this point. Here comes the 1-1. One, one. There was a little bit of a slap there, but it was out of place. She didn't get around on it. She didn't run up, but she didn't take a full swing either. Van has put three balls in play, Tony. They've all been pop-ups. Okay. Or, or, or fly outs mm -hmm. and pop up to the shortstop, fly out to left, and a fly out to center. Six, seven, and eight. So they're keeping it going. So now we got a one two count. Hannah's got the, the sign and another little foul to the left. She's determined she's going to check out Miss Bowman at third, <laughs> try to go over top and see if KK can do something. So, But still, it strikes. Hannah's not getting in any trouble. As far as base on balls, she's thrown strikes today are hittable pitches. You don't have to throw a strike if you throw a hittable pitch and you can get them to, to cut at it. Got the signal. Here comes the next pitch. That one was a little up, so now we're going to go 2-2. Two -two. This has the makings of a one nothing ball game. Yeah, it sure does. Lady Cats had a great chance there in the bottom of the second inning. Mm -hmm. They had a runner caught between third and home on a base hit who probably, in fact, definitely should have stayed at third and the bases would have been loaded. All right, there's the next pitch up and in to the left-hander. So for the second time tonight, Hannah's gone full. It's the second time, but it's the second batter in a row. So let's see if she can keep this leadoff hitter who looks like she might have a little speed with her. So... 
It's important to keep that lead runner off. Here comes the next pitch. She slapped it to Baylor. Baylor scoops it and throws just in time. That's what a third baseman's supposed to do. Really good job. It was a short hop. Mm -hmm. Baylor came in just barely, short hopped it, set herself, and threw a strike over to Reese Reagan. Got her by about a foot, so that's great. She didn't didn't let the ball play her. That's exactly right. She was aggressive. She was back enough. She had to go to her left a little. Just textbook. And these Lady Cats, you, you mentioned one error in three series or whatever. We know how to play ball. These fields are, that's nice. We get good bounces, but you've still got to put yourself in place. First pitch is a call strike on the upper edge to the number two hitter, Michaela McKinney, the third baseman for the Lady Vandals. She was a strikeout victim in the first. So I think we might have gotten a little bit of a break there on that first pitch, and we'll take it. Here comes 0-1. Swung on and missed right down the middle. 0-2. So Hannah's got her set up. I'd like to see one right about where it says Vandals on that uniform right over the plate. I don't think they'll get it. They've been going under that one. She looks in. Here comes the 0-2. Is outside, and she still got her swing and strike three for out number two. And she was completely fooled on that Absolutely. Absolutely. I don't know what, what it was. It didn't look very good from here, but... Uh, she just couldn't stop. So that brings up Avery Crouch, the shortstop and the number three hitter for the Lady Vandals. But once again, Hannah's really got it going. She got to a full count on the leadoff, didn't throw a ball at all there. There's the first pitch. Check swing is going to be called for a strike. I could even see that one from here. Seven strikeouts in the game now for Hannah Speed. Yes. And that's becoming, that's sad. We're, we're not even excited about that. That's becoming <laughs> commonplace. That's yep. how dominant this young lady's been. Yep. And she's a freshman. <laughs> <Yep>. <laughs> Here well, comes the old one pitch. About the same pitch, but she laid off this time. So we got one and one. She came into this game with 29 strikeouts in 19 innings pitched in the playoffs. And so the, the playoffs now, are where the good people are. Uh, <laughs> now be 36 strikeouts in 22-plus uh, innings. Yep. So she's got a 1-1 count again. Two outs, nobody on, top of four. There's a pop-out left field that's out of play. The batter actually got around on it. I think that might have been a little off-speed pitch by Hannah, but it was placed where she couldn't hit it anywhere but foul. And again, here in the top of the fourth, she has faced the minimum number of batters. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Nobody on base for Vamp. We've only had we've had three pop-ups, like John Mark said, and then that good play by Baylor. Here comes the next pitch, and there would have been a base hit, but it was foul again. So we're going to stay with the one-two count. So number three hitter traditionally is your best contact hitter, and she's showing her worth right here. She's making Hannah pitch. Outfield's still about medium depth, and I like that. There hadn't been much get deep, and we've been able to get to the balls. So here comes Hannah's 1-2 pitch. Swung on and missed, and that ends the inning right there with the 10th the strikeout for Hannah. And again, 1-2-3. She's faced 12 batters in four innings. That's the minimum, folks. So all she's uh, just taking care of us. So we're going to the bottom of the fourth inning. Same thing, though. We got to dent their pitcher, or we're still in a, in a pitcher's duel. No so. score between Sulphur Springs and Van. Lady Cat softball continues after this on KSST. Lady Cat softball on KSST, bottom of the fourth inning. About to start, and once again, here's Tony Flippin. All right, we got Baylor Boltman, the cleanup hitter, and she takes a whap at it and just foul over the first baseline. Baylor took a rip at it. I'm, I'm here to tell you, she can wake this crowd up. They need to turn the lights on here in Lone Oak. I hope they paid the electricity bill because it's getting dark right now. Rangers up, by the way, Tony, 7-6 to six in yep. the bottom of the fourth inning in the second game of their doubleheader out in Oakland. I don't know a score of the first game, but we weren't doing well unless we had a big rally. <laughs> Here's the next pitch, kind of got in on her hands, and the third baseman cuts across and makes a, a fly five. First out of the inning, that was McKinney. 
came across and cut in front of the shortstop. That one kind of got in the kitchen, as they say, on Baylor and hit it right off the hand. So that brings up Reese Reagan, the first baseman, senior, who had a hit to right field first time and ended up, there's the lights, they were listening to me. So one out, nobody on. Here comes the first pitch. She was way out in front, foul tipped it back to the left. She hit a single that was kind of cutting and to right field the first time, and the right fielder made a good play to hold her to a single. And then Baylor got, or uh, Reese got thrown out at the plate when we had that base run in faux pas. Next pitch right down the gut, and Reese wasn't able to catch up to it, so she's on an 0-2 count. Now we'll see if she can focus and put the ball in play. We got some pitchers here tonight, folks. Here comes Poole's next pitch, down low. One and two. After, well, go ahead. Go ahead, Tony. No, you're good. After that uh, threatening second inning for Sulphur Springs, uh, Jay Lee Potter came back and put them down one, two, three there in the third. Yeah, Baylor or uh, Reese is hanging tough, fouled another one off, so she's making her pitch a little bit. So Potter now has retired five consecutive Sulphur Springs batters going back to the uh, bottom of the second inning. So we got a one two count. Here comes the next pitch, and there's oh, what a job of hitting by Reese. That was a change up and she just stopped her motion and then hit it, barreled it up enough to get it right over her shortstop. So Reese Reagan is two for two. Great job of hitting right there. That's gonna bring up number 34, Claire Thompson, our catcher with one out, one on. Bottom of the fourth in a scoreless game in this regional quarterfinal. Two very evenly matched teams. Potter's ready. First pitch, squared the bunt, and it was down. She did a good job of pulling back, 1-0. and oh. Claire's good at, at getting on base via the walk. Mm-hmm. Just good eye. And by the way, she is in right field. We initially were told that she was going to be the catcher, but that turned out not to be the case, so she's the right fielder. I think they just give us lineups just to make us <laughs> have something to do. Here's the next pitch. Swung on and missed. She didn't offer to bunt that time, so one and one. This is where we've got a lot of options where she can still lay one down and try to get Reese into scoring position. And I kind of think that's what I'd be doing right now because one run very likely going to win this ball game unless something changes. Potter's got her, si her sign. Here comes the next pitch. I couldn't tell if it was swung on it or not. But swung it, on and missed. It was yep. a strike. Abby's here right in the midst of us, and I can't see. So one and two need to put the ball in play, see if we can move these runners. Even if you give them an out, we'd like to get Reese to second base. Here's the next pitch, down low. Taking a little bit of a chance, because I'm thinking it might be Reese where he called the one that was low. The one, mm -hmm. the one call that I've felt was a little borderline today. So we got two and two. We got her signal on the rubber, and here it goes. And that one was in there, and so she swung or struck out looking right there. That's only the fourth strike out there, but that's the second out of the inning. And that brings up Abby Goldsmith, our left-hander. Abby struck out first go around. Gets about middle of the batter's box. Potter's looking in the dugout. Getting the sig a signal. She's ready. Here's the first pitch. There's a foul ball. Everybody's swinging a little bit late. Both these girls got some speed. We got a lot of late swingers today. If Abby Goldsmith can get on, the very hot hitting KK Montgomery will be out. Absolutely. Our kind of bottom of the order leadoff, second leadoff, as we say. Although I do not see her on deck for whatever reason right now. now. She was. She must have gone back in. 
Here comes the 0-1 pitch, and there's another shot left, but it's uh, going to be foul over third. So we're, she's kind of dug herself an 0-2 hole, so she needs to really bear down and protect the plate, and that's kind of a lost art in some people's minds. You take for granted, you let that borderline pitch go, and those umpires will ring you up. So she needs to foul them off if there's anywhere close. Here comes the 0-2. That is down. One and two, and again, credit the umpire. I've been, I've been critical enough. I'm going to give him credit today. He's done a pretty consistent job. Potter's on the rubber. Here comes the one-two. Up, oh, Abby did a good job. She liked the looks of it coming in, but she laid off, and I, she couldn't have got that one, I don't believe. The 2-2 two -two count, one on, two out, bottom of the fourth scoreless game from Lono. Here comes Potter's 2-2, two -two, and she couldn't go down and get it. So strike, a strikeout swinging for the third out. And so once again for the Lady Cats, no runs, no hits. We did, or no, one hit, but we only got it to first base and uh, left them on base. So we're going to go to the top of the fifth inning with a 0-0 score. And it's Lady Cats softball on KSST. Lady Cats softball on KSST. We understand we've been in a weather uh, warning from uh, the National Weather Service, and so the Lady Cats... Uh, did not score in the bottom of the fourth inning after Reese Reagan reached base on a single. Claire Thompson and Abby Goldsmith both went out on uh, K's. Uh, Claire went out looking and uh, Abby went down swinging and they leave Reese Reagan at first base. And so it's still no score as we go to the top of the fifth inning between Sulphur Springs and Van from Lone Oak tonight. As uh, we can see that uh, that weather system behind us, but we're hoping, as Tony pointed out, that the prevailing wind will uh, will not allow it to come this way. It's trying to let us finish, and this game's moving on again. This this going to be a one nothing ball game, whether or not it's extra innings or not. Ready? Lights now starting to take hold on the field, as they just came on uh, about 10 or 15 minutes ago. Swinging and a foul ball by Malin Hale as we're at the top of the fifth inning. And uh, I'm John Mark Dempsey, and I was going to leave it with you oh, for I another inning, but I'll, okay. I'll, I'll pick it up. To me. I'm glad to pick it up here. Doesn't matter to me. So there you go. <laughs> well, here's the pitch. And she just got a piece of it for strike two. Malin Hale popped out to the Lady Cat shortstop Nicole Higgins in the second inning. Again, now Hannah Speed has faced the minimum number of hitters. Nobody has reached base in the top of the fifth inning here for Van. No score in the game. Lady Cats have not done that much themselves on offense. Here's a pitch low. And it is one and two to Malin Hale around the infield, Baylor Boltman at third, Nicole Higgins at short, Emerson Thompson at second, <clears throat> Reese Reagan at first base for the Lady Cats in the outfield, KK Montgomery in left, Allison Frazier in center, Abby Goldsmith in right, Anahi Velasquez behind the plate. And there's a pitch up high for a ball, and now it is two and two to Malin Hale. Hannah Speed has struck out eight batters in the first four innings. Four batters have put the ball in play. It's a pitching duel. And the pitch. This one hit off the end of the bat to second base, and Emerson Thompson comes charging in, fields it on the second hop, and makes a throw across her body to Reese Reagan for the putout. That one had a lot of English on it. Sure I was sure, I was glad to see uh, Thompson get a hold of it and use both hands up to covering it up because that one could have spun out of the yep. glove. Yeah, a lot of backspin. Yep. You can see it from here. Jay Lee Porter, number five hitter. She is the pitcher for Van. And the pitch by Hannah Speed. Misses inside for ball one. 
Potter put out on a fly ball to left field and a nice running catch by K.K. Montgomery in the second inning. Probably the best hit ball of the night so far for, for Van. Yep. And she fouls this one back, and it's one and one. K.K.'s kind of shaded over a little bit. She was a little more down the line the first go around, but Potter takes a cut at it, so Hannah's Hannah Speed's speed is not going to intimidate her, so this is a good battle right here. Again, might be a good chance for a changeup. Nobody on one out, top of the fifth, no score. Speed with the pitch. This one is hit foul to the third base side. Just clears the fence to our left. Baylor did a good job of getting all the way to the fence. If it had stayed in, she had it. One and two, the count. Tatum Horton, the first baseman on deck. Play on the artificial turf here in Lone Oak. It should rain. We're in great shape. I see they have a huge drainage ditch uh, or uh, culvert to our left here. This ball hit to the right side and falling fast, and that one falls in fair ground, and that is going to be a double for Jaylee Potter. Just inside the right field line, she just hit it off the fist. And it fell in front of Abby Goldsmith and beyond the reach of Reese Reagan and also Emerson, Emerson Thompson, the second baseman. And sliding in with a double, the first hit of the game, Jay Lee Porter, or Potter, for Van. Outstanding effort by our second baseman, Thompson. She nearly came up with that. That was just a well-placed ball. Fell in maybe, uh, oh, 50 feet behind first base and maybe a foot in fair territory, swing, a swing uh, and a miss by Tatum Horton here on the first pitch, the first baseman. Now it's going to be very important for Hannah to see if she can get a strike out here where that runner can't move up anymore. We need to keep her right there. Potter is the first base runner for Van. And here's a pitch down and in for ball one to Tatum Horton, who struck out swinging to end the second inning. Jaylee Potter, I want to keep wanting to say Porter, Jaylee Potter just barely got a little piece of that. Mm -hmm. That ball that fell in behind first base. Here's a pitch uh, fouled off to the left side, and the count goes to one and two. That brings up the importance of that foul ball, making it just out of the fence, too. If that had been in and Baylor could have gotten mm -hmm. her, then we don't have that hit. Mm -hmm. So it's a game of inches. Potter at second base with one out. Potter's got really good speed, too, so it's very important the Lady Cats play good defense here. One-two pitch is up above the shoulders for ball two. Two and two to Tatum Horton. The center fielder, Ava Hopson, is on deck. No score in the game, top of the fifth. Best of three series from Lone Oak. Regional quarterfinal series between Sulphur Springs and Van. 2-2 pitch by Hannah Speed, swung on and missed. Go. That's exactly what was needed right there. Keep Potter at second base. Now it gets it to where all we've got to do, if they put it in play, make an out, forget about that runner. Ninth strikeout of the game for Hannah Speed. And now Ava Hopson comes up for Van with a runner at second and two out. Right-handed batter, Ava Hopson. Number seven hitter. She stands about midway in the batter's box, and she shows bunt. And then she thinks better of it, swinging a miss for strike one. Some of the times when you get that squared around, you can't get set. I, I, yeah. I don't know if I like that or not. Right. If, I, if I'm going to bunt, then just bunt. But I, I don't, I'm not necessarily a fan, but there's a lot of ladies that can really, really work that bat. Baylor Boatman in three or four steps, third base. There there's a call strike, and it's 0-2 to Ava Hobson. J. Lee Potter at second base with a bloop double moments ago. First base runner for Van. But two outs and two strikes now on Ava Hobson, the center fielder. She struck out swinging to lead off the third. And the pitch way up high. Anahi Velasquez out of her crouch to bring that one down. One and two to count. She hadn't had to go after any balls to speak of, but Anahi's done a real good job. I don't know that we've had a pass ball 
all game except for foul tip. Oh, so no. She's done a very good job, very active back there. One-two pitch. Swung on and missed for strike three. That is the tenth strikeout for Hannah Speed, and they lead J. Lee Potter at second base. Here in the top of the fifth inning, and we go to the bottom of the fifth with no score. Sulphur Springs and Van. This is Lady Cat Softball on KSST. Lady Cat Softball brought to you by VT Medical, Northeast Texas Farmers Co-op, Alliance Bank, J. Hodge Chevrolet, City National Bank, Farm Country, Putin's Hardware, Wesley House, and the University Interscholastic League. No score. The Lady Cats and the Van Lady Vandals as we go to the bottom of the fifth inning. And K.K. Montgomery leading it off for Sulphur Springs. She is a hot hitter. She is 5 for 10, or a 500 batting average in the playoffs with a double, two triples, two RBIs, and three runs scored. That was coming into the game because uh, she got a base hit her only other time up in the second inning. And the first pitch. I think it's a little out. By Jaylee Potter, misses inside for ball one. To KK, KK Montgomery. KK's hit was right through third base. She normally gets her hits to the second base side and right field, so she pulled her hit tonight. 1 0 pitch, <laughs> swung on and missed for strike one. She was trying to hit a car in the parking lot with that one. She's, got, she's a powerful young lady. In the game against Quinlan Ford, she was two for three with two RBIs and three runs scored. And this one is hit foul down the third base side out of play. And the count goes to one and two to the sophomore left fielder, K.K. Montgomery for Sulphur Springs. Van around the infield, Mahala McKinney at third, Avery Crouch at short, Emerson Swope at second, Tatum Horton at first base. One-two pitch is down for a ball, and it is two and two to K.K. Montgomery. In the outfield, Nikki Hobson in left, Ava Hobson, we check on that. In center, and Tompkins. Abigail Otten in right. Tompkins in left. That's what we started, unless they've made a change. You're train. right, Tompkins in left. Two-two pitch, and K.K. Montgomery hits it foul. She's Out hanging, of play. hanging tough. She swung it a low one, so Potter gave her one right before that and seeing if she could entice her again. KK did a good job of laying off. Malin Hale is the catcher for Van. Nobody out, nobody on. And she swings and hits one to the second base. To the second baseman, Emerson Swope moving to her right on two hops. And Swope makes the play the first to get K.K. Montgomery by a step. Well, we can't live in the past, but I sure would like to have that, that uh, out we gave them at home in the second inning back. Yeah, that's the key play of the game right it now. It absolutely is, and I know Coach Carrillo has been over there beating himself up, so maybe we can pull him out of the fire here. One out, nobody on. Anahi Velasquez, the catcher and the number nine player in the batting order, takes a call strike at the knees. It's 0-1. She struck out looking in the second inning. Jaylee Potter has struck out five batters for Van, right-handed pitcher. And this one's way up high for ball one. One and one to count. Velasquez, one for eight coming into the game in the playoffs with an RBI and a run scored. She's a right-handed batter against the right-hander, Jaylee Potter for Van. One-one pitch. Swung on and hit to third on two hops. And Mahala McKinney with the long throw over to Tatum Horton, who makes the big stretch at first base for the putout. Two out and nobody on for Sulphur Springs. Top of the order, Emerson Thompson now, the second baseman. She pulled her foot a little bit, but there was enough time to uh, get her back there. Didn't say anything, but it looks like our tough catcher, Hale, is still back in there, so that's a good good sign there for mm -hmm. the Vandals and for everybody in general. She's still kind of shaking her hand a little, but she's hung, hanging in there. Two out, nobody on bottom of the fifth, no score. Emerson Thompson, call strike one, fastball at the knees. Thompson struck out swinging in the first. Hit a line drive right back at the pitcher, J. Lee Potter, in the third inning. 
Third baseman Mahala McKinney and first baseman Tatum Horton even with the bag. Maybe a, a step in. Here's a swing and a miss at a fastball. And it's 0-2. I think Jaylee Potter has gotten stronger as the game has gone on here. She's, uh, she's looking good. Two out, nobody on. 0-2 pitch now to Emerson Thompson. Misses inside, and it is one and two. This is almost a shame to have these two good pitchers in this round instead of one more round up. Mm. Lady Cats have three base hits in the ball game. Here's the pitch. Swung on and missed. Strike three. And that is strikeout number six for Jaylee Potter. And uh, we are through five innings. No score. Sulphur Springs and Van. We go to the top of the six. And this is Lady Cat softball on KSST. Lady Cat softball on KSST. It is the top of the sixth now and no score between Sulphur Springs and Van. Van will send up number eight, number nine, and number one in the batting order to face Hannah Speed, Nikki Tompkins, Lana Shearhart, and Emerson Swope. Rangers leading the Oakland A's seven to six in the bottom of the fifth. If our game is over in time, we'll join the uh, Rangers athletics game in progress. I got a feeling we're fixing to play a little bit of small ball. Whoever whoever gets a base runner, we're fixing to start moving them with a stolen base or a bunt. This late, that first run is going to be huge. Van got their first runner on last inning on a bloop double by Jaylee Potter. Just inside the right field line and not very many feet behind first base. Just out of the reach of Lady Cat second baseman Emerson Thompson. But Potter could get no farther as Hannah Speed struck out the next two batters. And now the first pitch is called strike. A fast ball to Nikki, Tomp Nikki uh, Tompkins. They were talking about a sub that had a tennis tournament that was probably going right. to come in, and I haven't seen her because she was going to go in for Tompkins in left field. There's strike two. My view was obscured. I'm not sure if she swung and she missed. She did swing. That's, that was that's a kind letter, of what I letter high, and she took a rip at it, but she wasn't close. Maddie Metcalf is who yeah. you're talking about. Yeah. yeah. And evidently, she was in a a regional tennis match. 0-2 pitch. Hit on the ground to shortstop. Two hops, and the throw gets by first baseman Reese Reagan. Nicole Higgins coming in at short making the throw over to first. And I think it bounced in, did it not, Yeah, that Tony? was a little low throw. So Tried to put a little much on it, and Reese had her glove turned the wrong way, didn't scoop. But So this is interesting, though. I, I would be willing to bet you we're fixing to get a bunt. What do we got here? We're going to see if we had – the ball went close to the dugout, but I didn't see it get in there. But we So I don't know what we're doing. Uh, we're going to keep the runner there. I think they were trying to see whether or not anybody saw it get into the dugout. Yeah. So runner's going to stay at first. We're fixing to see a bunt here. There's a brick wall directly behind first base down the – First base line and right field line. I think it went off that wall. Now we do have a uh, courtesy runner coming into the ball game here mm -hmm. for Van. Braylon White, 25. She's a lot speedier looking than the uh, uh, Tompkins. So this there again, we're fixing to put the ball in play. Lady Cats better be ready. Only the second base runner for Van. Reaching on an error. Nikki Tompkins, now the courtesy runner. Braylon White at first base. Hitter is Lana Shearhart, the designated player. And the first pitch is low for a ball. She didn't offer there. I'm shocked. Shearhart struck out swinging in the third inning. No score. Top of the sixth. Runner at first for Van. Nobody got this ball hit well to left field. Foul ball. But obviously foul. It is out of our view as we have the Lady Cat 
dugout uh, between ourselves and the left field foul pole. All I could look at is third base umpire, and he went up really quick, so may not have been as close as it looked, but it was a well-hit ball. I, again, I'm shocked that they're not. I'm glad they're doing it, but I'm shocked they're not bunting, trying to get the runner yeah, She She really turned on it. She did. She did. And a speed into the wind. 1-1 one, one pitch. Fouled straight back, and it's 1-2. and two. Runner at first is Braylon White. Nikki Tompkins reached base on an error to lead off the inning. So runner at first and nobody out. A 1-2 count here on Lana Shearhart, the designated player. She stands about midway in the box, crouching stance and the pitch. There's yep. a call strike Got three. It. I couldn't couldn't tell. He wasn't very demonstrative, but yep. we, we finally got it up there. Pitch just above the belt, and that is 11 strikeouts now for Hannah Speed. Yeah, that one was borderline up right at the letters. Uh, the, yep. the, the, the Vandal people will not be happy with it. Top of the order now, Emerson Swope, the second baseman, with a runner at first and one out. Swope 0 for 2 in the game. Struck out. Swinging in the first, grounded out to third base in the fourth inning. First pitch is hit foul into the net off to the left side, and it is 0-1 to Emerson Swope. So far, I'm pleased that they're not squaring because I think Hannah can handle them. Head coach for Van is Bailey Briggs. I presume that's her in the third base coaching box in front of us here. Here's another pitch from Speed. Hit foul into the net. She's just slapping at it. And we've got some friendly faces in Van, too. We've got Jared Moffitt is the head football oh. coach and athletic director. And then Matt Young is the offensive coordinator, I believe, for the Vandals. And they're both uh, decorated uh, Graduates of Wildcat football from years past. Right. They're building a good program in Van. Pitch away for a ball. How far back did uh, did Jared play at uh, Sulphur Springs? I think they were in that in that range of the 95 and right in there, maybe I just see. after with Damien and Quazy and some of them. I think they might have been just a little younger. One-two pitch. Check swing is a strike, and the runner going from first to second of the throw down is not in time with a head-first slide. Braylon White is in there with the steal, but... If we didn't have a good job covering second, or that might have been a closer play that went on through. So, uh, pretty good throw by Anahe, but now again, got a little pressure on with a runner at second. Swope. Goes down on strikes. That's the 12th strikeout for Hannah Speed. Two out. Runner at second base. First pitch, a fastball away to Mahala McKinney, the third baseman who's 0 for 2. She struck out twice, both times swinging. Number two hitter, so she's highly thought of in the Vandal lineup. Braylon White at second base with two out. Hannah Speed looking in for the sign. And the pitch. There and there for a call strike just above the knees. And it is one and one. When I say she's looking in for the sign, I, I don't think that's literally true. She's getting the sign from the dugout. And uh, so is Adahi Velasquez. She gives that rosin bag a workout, though, She does, she? but then the pitch before, she gave a little signal to Hannah Heath. 1-1 one, one pitch this is hit foul directly over our heads, but uh, falls uh, safely behind us by 30 feet or so. so. I think Hannah's taking this personally right here. She's going to see if she can take this and end this threat by herself. And I'm in her corner. She has not struck outside since the first inning, but she's got a chance here with the one and two count and two out and the pitch. And this one is popped up to the right side. I believe it is in play. And the second baseman, Emerson Thompson, makes the catch behind first base right on the foul line. 
So that ends the inning and uh, the very mild threat by Van with a runner at second base. But they leave that runner at second and we go to the bottom of the sixth with no score. Lady Cats and the Lady Vandals. This is Lady Cats softball on KSST. We're going to the bottom of the sixth now. No score between Sulphur Springs and Van. As Van had a runner at second base. But Hannah Speed came back and struck out Emerson Swope and then got Mahala McKinney to pop out to second baseman Emerson Thompson behind first base to end the threat. And they lead the runner at second base in the top of the sixth inning. Now Nicole Higgins getting ready to lead off for Sulphur Springs in the bottom of the sixth. And the first pitch is way up high, a ball. 1-0 to Higgins, who walked in the first inning, flew out to right field in the third inning. And we haven't been batting around near with the uh, urgency that we have in free recent games. Pitch to Higgins is fouled straight back, and it's one and one. Higgins coming into the game in the playoffs, five for 12 with a home run that was against Brownsboro, a 416 batting average, also a double, four RBIs. One and one to count to Nicole Higgins. Leading off in the bottom of the sixth inning. And the pitch. He's hit foul, out of play to the right side. One and two, the count. Hannah Speed, the pitcher, will be on deck, is on deck. Will bat next for Sulphur Springs. Lady Cat's big threat was in the bottom of the second inning when they had runners at first and second, and K.K. Montgomery singled to left field, and then Reese Reagan caught, got caught between third and home. Here's a pitch low. And the count goes to two and two to Nicole Higgins. We haven't had a base runner since the fourth, so we need to we need to pressure the Lady Vandals and make them play with the ball a little bit. Two two pitch, swung on and hit foul to the right side out of play, and the count remains at two and two. He's a little late. Potter's still throwing the ball hard. Since the second inning, you may have just said this, Lady Cats have only had one base runner. Mm -hmm. Higgins hits it foul at the plate. It rolls out into fair territory, but the home plate umpire signals foul ball. She was barely still had that foot in the batter's box or she would have been called out, but she was obviously there. No complaint from the uh, coaches over from Van. So had, a little fortunate there. Had that been a fair ball, I think she would have beaten it out. Yeah, but would have had a good oh, chance. Oh, yeah, if, if, if it hadn't hit her, yes, she would get that. If it, she somehow just topped the ball and it was fair out about 10 feet in front of the plate. 2-2 two -two pitch. Way up high for ball three. Doesn't matter how she gets there, we need her own. She can put pressure on the defense all by herself. No score, bottom of the six, 3-2 pitch, nobody out. Nicole Higgins, the batter for Sulphur Springs. The pitch is down in the dirt for ball four. There's your leadoff runner for the Lady Cats. That's big. Big kudos to Nicole. She fouled off two or three uh, balls. She saw a lot of pitches that time and didn't go for that low ball. So now let's see if we can get going. Third walk of the game allowed by Jaylee Potter for Van. Hannah Speed now the hitter for Sulphur Springs, 0 for 2 in the game. Popped out to second, grounded out to second. Fast runner at first base and Nicole Higgins, a threat to steal. Third baseman Mahala McKinney way in. About five steps at third base. Expecting a possible bunt here from Hannah Speed. First pitch is way up high for a ball, throw down to first. Diving back in is Nicole Higgins. She didn't offer to bun any there. I know Hannah's a good batter. Got to put the ball in play or get a pass ball or just a straight steal. Swung on and missed. Fastball at the knees. And it is one and one. Speed coming into the game one for nine, but that one was an inside the park home run against Brownsboro. She has two runs scored in the playoffs. 
Jay Lee Potter juggling the ball in the circle. Now the pitch is up high for ball two. Up around uh, the letters or maybe even the shoulders there. Two and one now the count to Hannah Speed, the freshman pitcher for Sulphur Springs. Very important not to help Potter out. She's been all over the place in this, this inning so far, so don't help. 2-1 pitch. Misses outside, inside, and it is 3-1. and one. Good job. Again, it doesn't matter how. Potter struggled with her control early in the game, then seemed to settle down after that uh, threat in the second inning. She's a little sour over that call. She went back and had a little thought. We'll see whether or not she answers herself. 3-1 pitch. Swung on and missed by Hannah Speed, and it's 3-2. and two. Nicole Higgins at first with a walk. Nobody out. No score in the bottom of the sixth inning. Here comes your steal, just like Van did in the, in the uh, bottom or the top of the sixth. 3-2 count. I wouldn't be surprised to see, see him go. Potter with the pitch. Swung on, popped up. Is it in play? I think so. Can they make a play? And it is the pitcher who comes and makes the catch and tagging up at first base and sliding in safely is Nicole Higgins. What a base running play by Nicole Higgins. That was something else because the pitcher was running toward the fence and Nicole is so fast. She took off. Uh, it was close. Now, if it had been a good throw, she might have been in trouble, but even though it wasn't an actual sacrifice, we got the runner at second with one out. So now put the ball in play, Miss Boatman. One out runner at second base. Baylor Boatman is the hitter. The, the ball was popped up in foul territory to the third base side. The pitcher, Jaylee Potter, comes off the mound, makes the play right in front of the screen here and tagging up Nicole Higgins. With a head first slide was safe. Making an appeal that she left early and the first base umpire didn't make much of a signal, but he said no go. So that just shows the absolute speed of Nicole Higgins. Have you ever seen that play before? Oh yeah. Yeah, they I mean it it's takes a special athlete, but she is. But that one was perfect when she's facing the screen. That was right. very heads up. Whether or not Nicole's the one that did that or the coach over at first said, watch it. But that was something. That goes as a sacrifice pop-up to the pitcher. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I've never seen it. 1-0 pitch. Swung out and missed. Fastball at the knees to Baylor Boatman, and it is 1-1. One one. She grounded out to second in the first and uh, popped out to the third baseman in the fourth inning. Boatman six for nine coming into the game in the playoffs. A 666 batting average with three doubles, an RBI and five runs scored. One one pitch and she hits it foul into the net behind the plate and it is one and two. Baylor Boatman cleanup hitter for Sulphur Springs. The third baseman, she is a sophomore. She takes a cut at it. I'm, I'm a sit here to say a base hit wins this ball game because Vandals are down to one inning. If we can put a number on the board this time, we can win this ball game and get out of here and get ready for tomorrow. Now their outfield is fairly deep here, Tony. Yes, they better be because she's going. if she hits it, it's going to be out there. And there's a pitch down and in for a ball, and it is two and two. I'd like to see her put it in play. A single... A short left field or short center or right, I think no question Nicole Higgins would score from second as, as deep as they're playing out there. She's going to have to be thrown out. She's going. Third base is just on the way home. 2-2 <laughs> two -two pitch. There it is. Hit there it is. Up the middle. And what the a shortstop play. made a tremendous play. I couldn't tell if yeah. it was through or not. Yeah. She made a diving a play. play to her left, and that saved the run. Yes, it did. I thought it was in the outfield, and that we were going to see Nicole Higgins rounding third, just like we talked about, but yep. Avery Crouch, the shortstop, going horizontal, made the play and got up and immediately turned toward third base and held Nicole Higgins at third. It's an infield hit for Baylor Boatman. Runners at first and third with one out. Nicole did a really good job of not getting hung out to dry, too, because she was going to go. 
So now we got and timeout, and they're fixing to walk Reese, and she's upset. That's where you got to – you can be upset. I don't blame her, but you, this is a team game. So She had two intentional walks against Quinn yes. and Ford. Yes. The word is out on her, and so that's that's a shame for her. But that, that loads the bases for Claire Thompson with one out. And Reagan had been two for two in this game. She had two singles, one in the second and then one in the fourth. And now she is intentionally walked. And that's the, she's, the, she's the product of her success. So you can't blame Van one bit, even though the base that was open was second base. So they, they actually put a runner in scoring position out of respect for Reese. Conference so. and the pitcher circle, and we have a uh, pinch runner or a, a courtesy runner, and that will be Tatum Thompson coming in for Reese Reagan. And I wondered why we didn't do that the last time Reese got on base and, and, and try to – this is a game you're going to have to manufacture something. So this is the most pressure we've put on them, but we haven't played as aggressively – as Van has with their limited base runners, but we got a chance here. It was Reese Reagan that was caught between third and yes. home on that yes. critical play back in the second inning. But now the bases are loaded with one out, and the hitter will be Claire Thompson for Sulphur Springs, right-handed batter. Infield is in, which, which increases the likelihood that a ground ball can get through. So Van is coming home with it. So we got a ball game right here. Pitch. And my vision was obscured think, by Abby Goldsmith. Was, yeah, I think it was a ball, but. I thought it was, too. Now, yeah, it shows on the scoreboard now, yeah. ball one. And very important to have smart base running here. Don't run up on anybody. Don't give them an out. Bases loaded and one out. No score, bottom of the sixth. Pitch is up high for a ball to Claire Thompson. Good eye there. And, again, Potter has had some trouble and has done some walking. Walks a run. So everything's on the, on the plate right here, but we've got to be, if the ball's on the ground, everybody's got to go. If it's popped up, got to play smart. Don't get too aggressive. Thompson walked in the second, struck out looking in the fourth. 2-0 pitch, way up high for ball three. All right, now here's your ball game. And she's Jaylee Porter, or Potter in danger of walking in the first run of the ball game here. Yep. A 3-0 count. To Claire Thompson. So we don't need a signal here. We say, Claire Thompson, sorry, but you're just going to take <laughs> one pitch. You're probably going to take two pitches. I would, if I was coaching, I would say you, the first time you're going to swing is with a full count. I'd make Potter come in twice. It's Nicole Higgins at third, Baylor Boatman at second, and Tatum Thompson at first for Sulphur Springs. Thompson, the courtesy runner. You can hear the crowd now. They know this is ball game time right now. 3-0 count to Claire Thompson. Wide stance, stands at the back of the batter's box and the pitch. Right down the pipe. In there for call strike one. She's taken all the way as you would expect. I'd have the same thing on right here. 3-1 pitch. Foul back. Took a pretty good cut at it. She had the green light, so now. That pitch was uh, borderline. I think it was uh, above her belt. Yeah, I think it would. if it was over the plate, I think height-wise he'd have called it. Now, you can't help her, but you can't sit there and take a third strike either. You got Abby Goldsmith on deck. But now's the time for the, for the action pitch. 3-2 pitch. Bases loaded, one out, swung on and missed, or did she tip it? Yeah, she fouled it. She fouled it off, hung tough. She kind of ducks that right shoulder, and, but she made some contact. Just got a piece of it, and it rolled yep. off to the first base side there. Looks like she's getting in the inside. Uh, some of these girls get, well, she's at the back of the box, so she's ready. 3-2. Swung on, hit foul. She's hanging tough. And she's getting the ball in there. They're getting the ball on their hands. We haven't hit very many balls solid. That's what I, I want to see the ball hit. We got the infield in. We can get the base hit. Base hit. 
probably scores two if it gets out of the infield. And the pitch. There's ball four. four. There's ball four, and a run comes in to score. All right. Low for ball four. Great job by Claire being patient, and she fouled off some really good pitches. So that all the pressure in the world is on now. So now we still got two outs to play with. Base hit, and all of a sudden you're up three. Nicole Higgins comes in to score, and Sulphur Springs leads Uh-oh. it one to nothing. We got it. We're fixing to have a lightning break. This is liable to delay 30 minutes. Lone Oak supervisor yep. in charge yep. has walked out to have a conversation <laughs> with the home plate umpire. That's what's happening. It is 752s, so we're fixing to have a 30-minute delay mandated by UIL. Hasn't been announced yet, but the players are walking off the field. Head coach David Carrillo just shook the hand there of Claire Thompson, and that was a terrific at bat. Absolutely. And sometimes you don't appreciate it when a, a, a batter doesn't get a base hit. But but as you say, she fouled off she some fouled good off pitches. About three pitches very, very easily. And that's the deal. Even though she walked, they were throwing pitches you could get to that couldn't that were callable strikes. And that's what you got to do is protect the plate. The big play of this inning. And uh, one that I'll remember for a long time was uh, with Nicole Higgins at first base having walked and Hannah Speed hit a pop-up in foul territory here on the third base side. The pitcher comes off the mound, makes the catch, and you made a great point. She's facing away from second base. Exactly. It's, a, it's exactly the type thing if you've got a runner at third and say the third baseman is running toward the left fielder and catches it over yeah. his head. He's got to stop, turn, plant, and throw a strike. She had to do the exact same thing. And with, with Nicole's speed, a good throw. I mean, it was close. but It was a close it, uh, play. She could have been done, but that is the play of the game at the moment. And, uh, and Nicole Higgins slid in head first and was safe on what uh, is scored as a sacrifice pop-up to the pitcher. Mm-hmm. And uh, from there, Baylor Boatman singled. And they intentionally walked. Reese Reagan, Baylor Boatman, that was another key play as the shortstop, Avery Crouch, made a fantastic yes. diving stop there, or uh, that would have scored the run. Absolutely. Baylor Boatman would have had a single into to left field, and, uh, and Nicole Higgins would have come in to score. Uh, but uh, Avery Crouch, shortstop for Van, made a tremendous play at, to keep the ball in the infield. And then uh, they intentionally walked Reese Reagan, and then Claire Thompson with that excellent at bat that we were just describing a moment ago, uh, forces in Nicole Higgins with the bases loaded, and the Lady Cats lead it one to nothing in the bottom of the sixth. But we have a delay because of lightning in the area, and uh, the rule is that it has to be a 30-minute delay. Is that 30, right? 30 minutes. If you've got a strike, and all of them have these lightning meters. And if you have a strike within, eight, I believe it's eight miles, you you have to wait 30 minutes. And this is exactly what we ran into at Athens, where we had four of them back to back. Right, had a two-hour delay because yeah. of uh, because of lightning. But uh, it's it's for the safety, and that's that's the utmost. But this, I, I we get the uh, max preps. You know, we look right. for stuff like that. I got something in here and have been amazed at it early, or it's been all year, but even after we're three deep in the playoffs, it had the rankings the other day, and I think it said that Sulphur Springs was something like number 250 or 300 in the state, and I'm like, there's not 300 teams in 4A or better well, I than think us. that's overall. That's, uh, that may, even overall, we're a good, we're a good ba- uh, softball team, so... They were in the last regular season rankings. The Lady Cats were ranked 25th in, in 4A mm-hmm. in the state. But, uh, yeah, yeah I, I see that, too. I think that takes all of the it, teams into It does, but it's still, I, I, I want to see them. You, you think they're better than I'll, I'll play. Than, I'll, play um, I'll play into that anything over 100. I'll play. I don't care if you're 6A or whatever. But. Well, I, it, it's interesting. You see some scores, and I, I can't uh, remember the particulars here, but I was looking at Van. And uh, their uh, their scores from this season, they beat Richardson early in mm-hmm. the season. Sometimes the smaller schools, they have more girls that 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 
love the game, that come out to play, and the larger schools, for whatever reason, have a hard time getting girls to come out yeah. to play. Softball is pitching. This is a classic example. These are two very quality teams with very quality and equal pitchers. I'm not going to trade in, uh, Hannah for Potter at all, but Potter has held her own. And in all honesty, I hope this ends one and nothing. I hope, we, I really almost hope we don't bust it open and we get four or five because <laughs> she deserves it. Yeah. But yeah. it's a, it's a, it's what playoff softball is supposed to be, and this is just two quality teams. So it is one to nothing, Sulphur Springs in the bottom of the sixth. And, uh, in fact, the last pitch was the, the ball that uh, put Claire Thompson on first base and forced in Nicole Higgins with the lead run. And then at that point, the, the game was stopped. We still have uh, only one out here in the bottom of the sixth. The bases will still be loaded, but it's going to be – uh, something like half an hour at this point, maybe 25 minutes or so uh, before we come back to play. So uh, what we should do, uh, James Terry, is send it back to the studios. And if you would like to uh, let the folks listen into the Rangers game here, I'm sure they would enjoy that and would appreciate that. Uh, I will tell you that Lady Cat Softball is brought to you by BT Medical, Northeast Texas Farmers Co-op, Alliance Bank, J. Hodge Chevrolet, City National Bank, Farm Country, Hooten's Hardware, Wesley House, and the University Interscholastic League. We're coming to you from Lone Oak. Lady Cats ahead one to nothing in the bottom of the sixth in this first game of a best of three series against the Van Lady Vandals. And we will be back here in uh, something uh, amounting to 25 minutes or so from now, we hope, uh, with the resumption of this ball game. I'm John Mark Dempsey along with Tony Flippin, and uh, we will send it back to the KSST studios. Okay, James Terry, thank you very much. We are about ready to resume the game from last night that was suspended because of lightning. We are in the bottom of the sixth, and the Lady Cats have just taken a one to nothing lead on a bases loaded walk to Claire Thompson. And so Abby Goldsmith will be the batter, and we will. Am I, I am correct, we have bases loaded still. Yeah, you got still. Baylor Boatman is at third, Reese Reagan at right. second, and Claire Thompson at first. Oh, somehow I drew Claire at second base. I don't no, know why I did and that. And then no count on Abby. She's she's coming up with a clean slate. One out, bases loaded, bottom of six. Yeah, I think that uh, the game was halted on, on the immediately when that ball four was yep. issued to Claire Thompson and Nicole Higgins came in with the first run. So we're on the different side of the uh, field tonight. The Lady Cats and the Van Lady Vandals have switched dugouts in anticipation of game two. But this is a continuation of game one, and Abby Goldsmith is about to step in here against Jay Lee Potter, the pitcher for Van. With the bases loaded and one out, and the Lady Cats ahead one to nothing in the bottom of the sixth inning, and Potter is into the wide, and here we go. And the pitch is swung on and fouled to the third base side, out of play. 0-1 the count on Abby Goldsmith. 
Tony, be great for the Lady Cats to break it open here in the bottom of the six. I just, I just want to see the ball put in play because I think that if we put it in play, we're going to get at least one. I would even be looking at a bunt right here. Goldsmith, left-handed batter. Stands about midway in the batter's box. She takes a pitch down and in for a ball, and it is one and two. A new slate of umpires for this ball game, too, and so hopefully we'll uh, not have any objections to the strike zone for the rest of this one and get to learn them. 1-1 <laughs> one, one pitch, hit on the ground to second base. The force will be at home, and they get the out there. It goes from Emerson Swope, the second baseman, to Malin Hale, the catcher. And Baylor Boatman is put out four to two. Well, that, we did put it in play, but they made a good play there. Two hopper to the second baseman, Emerson Swope. And now it is the hot hitting KK Montgomery coming up for Sulphur Springs with two out. And we have a courtesy runner at first base. That is uh, Dottie Smith for Abby Goldsmith. KK could hit one of her liners over second base the way the wind's blowing in. That'd be a good chance to get that thing to the corner. She singled in the second inning. That was the play on which Reese Reagan got hung up between third and home and put out. And then she grounded out, did KK Montgomery to second base in the fifth inning. So bases loaded, two out, a run across, bottom of the sixth. Lady Cass leading one to nothing, and a fast ball from Jay Lee Potter, and therefore a call strike. KK Montgomery, five for 10 in the playoffs coming into this game with a double and two triples. Stands near the back of the batter's box. Pitch, and she hits it towards short, two hops, and the force play at second base. Force play on Dottie Smith coming down, goes six to four. Fielder's choice for KK Montgomery, and that is the end of the sixth inning, and the Lady Cats only get the one run. And we go now to the top of the seventh inning in this game one of the regional quarterfinal series with Van, with the Lady Cats leading one to nothing, and Lady Cats softball continues after this on KSST. Lady Cat softball on KSST. I'm John Mark Dempsey along with Tony Flippin. Matt Jansen is our technical director and handling the video tonight. And James Terry, the producer in the studio. Lady Cats can win this first game if they can uh, get the Lady Vandals out without a run scoring here in the top of the seventh inning. It'll be Avery Crouch. Malin Hale and Jay Lee Potter, three, four, and five in the batting order. So the part of the batting order coming up here against Hannah Speed, Tony. Yeah, and this is, uh, Van did an outstanding job in that uh, bottom half of the sixth with no, we didn't have any infield or, or warm-ups other than just regular warm-ups. So this is a lot different situation starting off cold. So it'll, we'll see how Hannah does. I think she'll be up to the task. Hannah Speed has struck out 12 batters and allowed only one hit so far in this game, which of course started last night. You can hear the wind whipping in our microphones. And the pitch by Hannah Speed swung on and missed. Great fastball to Avery Crouch, who struck out swinging her first two times up. Crouch the shortstop. Right-handed batter against the right-hander. Hannah Speed for Sulphur Spring. Speed looking in. And there's a bunt out in front of the plate. Speed on top of it. The throw to first is in time. Nice. One nice. to three, the put out. Reese Reagan with the stretch there at first base for Sulphur Springs. The bunt, Tony, only about uh, maybe 10 feet out in front of the plate. And I'm surprised that Hannah Speed got off the uh, mound or got out of the circle as quickly as you did to field that. Outstanding play. I'm the same thing. I was afraid that was going to get legged out for a hit. She made a perfect throw, kept it inside the base path where Reese could get to it. Reese really stretched out there. So a big first out. That sets the plate for the rest of the inning. Malin Hale, the catcher now, with a crouching stance, right-handed batter. She swings on the first pitch, pops it up to first base, and it is bobbled, but picked up by Hannah Speed, and she throws to Emerson Thompson, the second baseman, covering at first. What a play. 
That one was just, I think that was the luck of the draw, but we're going to take it. Reese ran in as far as she can, actually overran it. It hit her on the hill, but it had a good bounce to Hannah, and we had good coverage by Thompson. Reese Reagan, the first baseman coming in. There was a lot of backspin on that ball, yes. Tony, and it the kicked out of tricks. the wind uh, had a factor, and it bounced out of her glove, but Hannah Speed, the pitcher, was there, and the second baseman covering at first base, Emerson Thompson. Swing and a miss it's on the first pitch here to Jay Lee Potter, the pitcher. Two out and nobody on. Lady Cats and out away from winning this first game and the quarterfinal in the uh, – Layoff here. There's a pitch way up over the like head of uh, our batter, Jaylee Potter. She might have done that intentional, make her think about it. Lady Cats and out of way from this regional quarterfinal win over Van. Outstanding out. start by both teams. We just need that one. And, and this pitch is hit well to left field, but KK Montgomery, the left fielder, moving to her left. Makes the catch, and that is the day. Lady Cats win it one to nothing. And Tony, I thought that was hit better than it turned out. It's going to take a shot. I, it was right where I thought it would be. It's going to take a shot into this win. KK had to work on it, but she came with it. Center fielder was right there in case she bobbled. So, perfect start. Nice job, Lady Cats. So, Van able to put the ball in play each time here in the top of the seventh inning. Although uh, Hannah Speed had struck out 12 batters coming into this inning, she does not get a strikeout here in the seventh, but uh, a great fielding play to start it off on a bunt by Speed, and then uh, an alert play that got the second out. That could have been a disaster. Sure could. A pop-up that was bobbled at first base, but Hannah Speed picked it up, the pitcher, and then Emerson Thompson very alertly covering at first base, the second baseman. And they got the put out three to one to four. And then Jaylee Potter flying out to KK Montgomery in left field. Lady Cats win it. One to nothing in this regional quarterfinal best of three series. And now game two will be coming up in uh, not very long. Pretty quick. That so, second out there looked like Central Expressway at rush hour. There's so many people running around out there. <laughs> we got out of it. So we will, I think, uh, break away and let uh, James Terry take it once again from the KSST studio, and uh, we will get ready for game two, which should start, I would think, Tony, in about 20 minutes or thereabouts. That'll be the, lo the longest it'll take. Not longer than that, then, yep. you say. All right, yep. so, so maybe 15. So we'll break it off, send it back to the KSST studios. I'm John Mark Dempsey. This is uh, Lady Cats softball. Of course, Tony Flippin with us here. Lady Cats win it one to nothing in game one, game two coming up. And uh, we say good evening for the time being, very briefly from Lono. We'll see you again very soon.